Welcome to EuroPCR. My name's Darren Walters from Australia, and I have the pleasure to be here with Raoul Sharma, my friend and colleague from the United States. We're here to discuss the early treatment of aortic stenosis. Do we need to wait? So, Raoul, do we need to wait in patients with aortic stenosis? Uh, well, I think, Darren, the answer is no, but I think to dive into that a little bit deeper, Perhaps it's good to start with the early TAVA trial um, that uh, Philippe Genero presented. And just as a reminder for those that may not be as familiar, the role of the early TAVA trial, as you know well, was to look at uh, early intervention uh, with TAVA versus clinical surveillance in patients who had severe symptomatic aortic stenosis that were asymptomatic and deemed to be at low surgical risk. And I think there were a number of outcomes that were kind of critical from that study. The first was that there was a significant difference between intervention with the TAVA arm versus watchful waiting, um, driven by uh, mostly unplanned hospitalizations, but the composite endpoint of mortality, stroke, and unplanned hospitalizations. Um, that was out to two years. And I think what was a big takeaway was the safety and effectiveness profile of the intervention arm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, coming out of that study was a real shift in the way we think about our approach to treating aortic stenosis, where we've moved from looking at it as a very indolent disease process and taking that conservative, watchful waiting approach until patients develop symptoms, and to really challenge that thought process and look at an early, more proactive way of treating them with TAVA, particularly when it has such a good safety profile. Yes, absolutely. And today here in uh, Paris, we heard about the cost, the cost related to a watching and waiting. Patients who flip into symptomatic aortic stenosis are often more than half of these patients are severely decompensated. And the economic cost associated with that, that that's more than the cost of a valve. Um, the cost of increased length of stay, of increased complications and prolonged recovery, really is, uh, is it worthwhile watching and waiting? Tell me about your practice in the US because we're starting to see really this concept of acute valve syndrome. Tell me about your practice in the US. Is this a real phenomenon? I think it is. And I think until recently, we haven't had you know, such a, a term to describe what we've actually been experiencing for some time. We're treating a lot of sick patients who are presenting acutely, uh, a lot of sick inpatients uh, with a variety of symptoms, advanced symptoms, all the way up to and including cardiogenic shock. And you know, as you mentioned, there is a significant cost to that, both clinically and economically. And so it doesn't make sense when you've got a therapy that's so safe and so effective and we've got a significant volume of data to support that to wait until they are presenting with those advanced symptoms or with an acute valve syndrome. Um, and so now we have a growing body of evidence to say that we should be surveilling these patients more closely and intervening early. And certainly in our practice, we're seeing what was presented today in real life, and that is that these patients don't fare as well. They are staying in hospital longer. They're requiring more ICU, and that's a, at an increased cost to the healthcare system and often with adverse consequences to those patients. Absolutely. And in Australia, I can tell you that as of this present time, more than 50% of our patients make up acute valve syndrome. 50% of our patients are decompensated heart failure, they've had arrhythmias, they've had syncope, they may have been um, resuscitated from cardiac arrest, and more than 50% of patients are inpatient TAVIs. It's a, it's a far cry from the day where patients were electively worked up, admitted on the day, discharged the next day. And so, you know, in order to adjust to that paradigm, we really need to move from the moment we identify that they have severe aortic stenosis because we know it's only a matter of time and really a short amount of time, what, six months on average, before these patients flip into quite decompensated phase. So, you know, do we need to wait? Can you answer that question? I think not. Um, I think now we have enough supporting data, enough clinical evidence uh, to say that these patients don't do well if we wait. Mm. And as you said, you know, in early TAVA, a significant proportion of patients, over 40%, presented within six months. So the other question is, if, if you are gonna wait, you don't really know how quickly these patients are gonna decompensate. And it's a risk that, quite frankly, we can't afford to take. Yeah. And, and so I think that, no, we shouldn't be waiting. As soon as we've identified patients who have severe AS, we should be proactive about looking into treating them. Yeah. And I think the take home message really, particularly after the further evidence today of the economic cost is, no, 
if you identify severe aortic stenosis, make immediate plans to treat the patient. You're going to have better outcomes for the patient. You're going to have a more cost-effective solution for your hospital. Uh, there's no need to wait. Absolutely. Totally agree.